Hello everybody, welcome back to another Premiere Pro tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to use Premiere Pro Photoshop Generative Fill, matte painting, green screening, masking, reflections, all these cool things to combine them to make awesome videos like this one here of a dinosaur kind of running across the beach. That might not be super impressive, but here is what we started with. This was the original shot, a boring sunset. That's it with some waves crashing in. We're gonna isolate all the different elements, matte paint them, and make this into an awesome video. And I'm gonna show you each technique step by step. Let's get going. All right, so I'm starting with a blank screen here so we can go through this step by step with me. Step one, open up Premiere Pro, and now we need to grab some footage. I'm gonna go into my Finder because I'm on a Mac. If you're on a PC, you may wanna go into your Windows Explorer and then just drag and drop in your original footage or your underlying footage. For me, it's this glorious sunset. I just dragged and dropped it into the project panel and then I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna drag and drop it onto my timeline. Once it's onto my timeline, I'm just gonna go a little bit forward to say about six or seven seconds, seven seconds, let's go to seven seconds. So you'll see here, I'm just clicking step forward until it says seven zero 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 and presto i'm going to make this a seven second long video so i'm just going to drag the end in so that this way we've reduced it to seven seconds just because you don't want to see it this doesn't need to be a long video i just want to make this as quick as possible without too much processing power so there we go that's step one all right the next step is i'm just going to hit play and let's just take a look at this footage it's quite still but if you look very carefully you will notice that there is a little bit of motion in general when you do matte painting in most cases, you don't want any motion in it because it makes it very difficult in post-production to account for a little subtle movement. So I'm gonna show you how to stabilize this. Even though it's about 98% stable, this is an effect that you could use anytime. I'm just gonna go into my effects panel and I'm gonna type in the word warp. When you type warp into the search bar, you'll get something called warp stabilizer. I'm gonna just grab, grab that. It's under video effects, distort, warp stabilizer, drag and drop that onto the footage. Now, when you do that, go now to your effects control panel, your effect controls panel. If you do not see either your effects or your effect controls panel, you want to go to window and make sure there's a check mark beside effect controls and effects. Okay, there's the check mark. Here is where my effect controls panel is. And when you click on it, if you scroll down, you should see warp stabilizer already being applied. That said, I'm going to go ahead and make an adjustment, and this is probably the only adjustment you need to make here, is right now it says result smooth motion. For this, we want no motion at all. So I'm going to click on result smooth motion, and I'm going to switch it to no motion. You'll see here that it's just doing a slight recalculation. And now when I click on it, there's absolutely no motion to, on the sides. The only thing that's moving in this image or this video is the water and that's fine that's what we want we want to keep that so that's step two let's get into step three all right let's keep rolling so the next step is you need to look for the camera icon now it's called export frame for me it's located right here there is a chance that if you've uh, recently adjusted uh, premiere pro or you just installed it you may not see that what you need to do if you don't see the export frame is go find the plus sign here which is the button editor click on that and then make sure that this one here, where are you, Mr. Frame or Mrs. Frame? This one right here that says export frame, you can drag it and put it into the timeline. So it's already there for me, but make sure that that's in your little toolbar, pardon me. Now, the next step is because we've stabilized all the motion, we can now take a screenshot of anywhere in this and we're gonna go ahead and start working with generative fill. So, so to take a screenshot, as you can imagine, click on export frame when you click on it you'll see you get a few options you can it'll just automatically name it which is fine you can select jpeg png i'm just going to stick with jpeg but you can of course change that i'm going to go ahead and allow it to import into project and i'm also going to choose the path users desktop if you don't want to save it to your desktop click on browse and select somewhere else to save it i'm going to go ahead and save it to my desktop and i'm going to click on ok Yes, I'm going to over... Uh, no, let's change the name. Uh, just in case. Glorious... I'm going to call it Glorious Beach. So I'm just changing the name. Then I'm going to click on OK. All right, let's get on to the Photoshop side of things. All right, so now we are in Photoshop. And I've got my previous work open here so I can show it to you. But you'll notice up here that this is Photoshop Beta. At the time of this recording, only the Beta has generative fill in it. 
as well as the online Adobe Firefly, which is free to use by the way, at least at the moment. But we're gonna do this in Photoshop Beta. If you don't have this installed, you can just go to your Creative Cloud here, click on that little Creative Cloud icon, and then on the left side, you'll see Beta Apps. And under Beta Apps, you can install any of these different betas. I've got the Photoshop installed as the beta. So the beta's in there. So I'm gonna delete this. Let's start from scratch. Okay, so here we go. The first step is you'll remember that I saved that image to my desktop. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on desktop here. So I've gone into my finder and I'm going I'm going to desktop and I, and I named it Glorious Beach. So here's the image. If you're not on a Mac and you're on a PC, you can find it in your Windows Explorer. Grab that image and drag and drop it into Photoshop beta. So here we go. I'm gonna drag the image, dropping it into beta. Presto, I'm gonna click on open and here we go. Now I've got a plane flying overhead, so I'm gonna come back when that's gone and I'm gonna show you the next technique. All right, so step one is I wanna pull out this kind of murky sky. There's not a whole lot going on there. And I wanna make the sky maybe blue with some red in it and just a really nice skyline. So how am I gonna do that? It's very simple. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that little unlock just in case. I'm gonna to go to the left side here into my toolbar and I'm gonna grab quick selection. And I'm gonna go ahead now and just select the sky. And you'll see here that Photoshop has gotten really good at making selections. So I've just gone ahead and selected that sky. And when you do that, you'll see our little toolbar pop up. This is in Photoshop beta, don't forget that. And on that little toolbar, it says generative fill. I'm gonna left click on it. And then it says, describe what you'd like to generate or feel free to leave this blank. Okay, so I'm gonna go, and again, I want maybe a purple skyline with a uh, dark, with a bright, I don't know, something with a bright moon. I don't know, let's go crazy, right? Like whatever, something like that. It doesn't matter, click on generate. This is going to now give us three candidates that we can select from, and we'll probably choose one of them. But keep in mind, as of right now, you have unlimited generation. So if you don't get what you want, you can always just change it and keep trying until you get what you want. So let's see what we get here. Here we are, it should be done in a second here. All right, oh, that's not so bad, okay. Pretty good, I might keep that. Let's go to the second one. Not so bad, I like that one. Let's go to the third one, also pretty good. Okay, I don't know, this one looks like a nice desert with a moon in the sky. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and accept this one, but I need to make some changes to it because if you look really closely, you'll see here that there's a little bit of orange. It's not blending into the sky quite perfectly. So we're gonna go ahead and accept this. I'm gonna show you the next step. We're gonna go ahead and mask it in the next video. All right, so in this section, we haven't done anything. We're just sitting here on the image. And what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna go ahead and click on select and mask. So this is basically gonna commit it but we're gonna adjust it a little bit. So when I click on Select and Mask, you'll see here that I've got a few options on the right side here. In particular, I'm gonna go ahead and increase the radius to two pixels. I'm gonna turn Smart Radius on. I'm gonna smooth it to about 10. And again, this is with me just roughing it in here. You can, of course, adjust it as you see fit. I'm going to feather it one pixel. I'm gonna increase the contrast to about 10%, and I'm gonna shift the edge to the left about 4%. These are just my personal settings. You can, of course, adjust those as you see fit. So we've got a little bit more of a nicer connection between the orange and the, the rocks. Let's go ahead now and switch up and get going on the blurring. All right, so welcome back. So in this one, I'm just gonna do some simple blurring just to kind of manage the transition from the purple to the orange, to the darker grayish areas. I just wanna make it look a little more believable. So what I'll do is I'll go to the left side here and I'm gonna grab my blur tool. It looks like the oil drop. And then it's going to say, do you need to rasterize this image? I'll just show you what I mean here. So I'm gonna blur like this here, for example. I'm gonna click on it and it says, the smart object must be rasterized before proceeding. Yes, I'm going to rasterize it. And what it's gonna do is it's just gonna basically allow me to blur in kind of the purple and the green or purple and the orange and just make it look like it's a little bit more of a believable transition and you'll see a little bit of lightish pink uh lightish pinkish purple here at the bottom here that's quite on purpose that just gives it that little bit of a transition look it's not a required step but it's one that i like to take all right now let's get to chopping all right so the next step is before we actually start chopping out the water let's go ahead and save this let's let's, let's actually export this file we're gonna to go to export and we're gonna go as a quick PNG. And the reason why is I just wanna show you what we've done so far. 
So I'm just gonna leave it as the name Beach. I'll put it on the desktop and presto. Now let's go back into Premiere Pro and let's see what we're cooking with. So if I go into my finder and I grab that new one that we just, I put it on the desktop, right? Yeah, desktop. It's beach.png. Let's put this in here and see what we got. Here's the original shot. If I go in play here, you'll see obviously we've got our stuff. Now I'll put this on top of it and let's see what we got. Now we've kind of got the background we kind of want with the purple and the stuff, but the obviously the uh, the purple is not reflecting on the rocks or the ocean at all. And the ocean is a still image where we, you know, if we want this to look, you know, correct, we want to keep that ocean flowing just like that. And we want the image or the reflection on it. So that is the next step. Let me show you how to do it. All right, so for the next step, we're back in Photoshop beta here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a duplicate of this top layer. We're gonna make a copy of it. So I'm just gonna drag and drop it onto this plus sign inside the rectangle. And that creates a duplicate copy. It doesn't really do anything, but watch this. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna hold down the command key on a Mac, control key on a PC, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the transform. So we're basically going to edit free transform. You can do it this way as well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it down something like this, somewhere like that. And what next is I'm going to rotate it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate it like this, something like that, because what I wanna do is I wanna get this purplish color onto the rock. So here we go, we've kind of rotated it. It's not quite large enough for the bottom part of the uh, image. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this up, something like, oh, no, actually, you know what? I'm gonna pull it up like that. I'm not gonna hold the shift key down. And we're gonna get something like like that that looks pretty good so we've gone ahead and duplicated the component at the top and then we flipped it over and we made it a little bigger i'm going to hit enter and now i'm going to click on this image here and i'm going to go up to edit and then i'm going to go to transform and i'm going to go to flip horizontal the reason why we did that is because the moon should be on the same side so let's go ahead and match the moon up here so i'm just going to move it to the right a little bit obviously the moon's a little bit bigger but in reflections sometimes you get that kind of cool look where the reflections larger than the um, the source. So this looks pretty good. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead now and turn this into an accurate reflection. Let me show you how to do that. All right, so creating a reflection that looks accurate where it's kind of just like the the, the ground has the color, cone, or the color cast of the sky. It wouldn't be gray. You'd get some purple and white in there. It's very easy to do. What you do is you just go over here to the layers and you drag the top layer down to about Let's go with about, I'm gonna go with 12%, let's say. And then to get it, you know, I mean, you guys can dial this into your taste, of course. There we go, around 12%, looks pretty good. You can actually switch the blending mode from normal. You can try out a few of the others, but the one I'm gonna go with is color. That gives it the nice purple look, but it doesn't overdo it, right? And even 12%, it still looks pretty purple. So maybe we'll go down to like, nine percent we'll make this very subtle so the purplish color cast is on the ocean it's on the rocks now we need to cut out the area of the ocean so that we can make that flow in the last part of the video and i will show you how to do that next all right so basically we want to cut out the ocean part here so that we can leave a hole in this image so that we can see the video in the video the ocean or the or the lake or whatever this is will be flowing and it'll look natural so it's actually quite easy to do First off, select the bottom layer. This is the layer that we want to remove that from. So we want we don't want to remove it from any of these top layers because these are just you know uh, pretty layers with purple and stuff. But this is the actual layer with the content on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the left side and I'm going to grab my quick selection tool. With this tool selected, I'm going to select this river or this lake, and I'm just going to go and slowly pull in what I think needs to come out. So something like that. Now it's pretty rough. This part here is kind of hard to tell if that should be in the video or not. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key or the Option key and I'm gonna subtract this component. But you can go ahead and accept and put in this crust here. But for the sake of time and brevity, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that out. Also, if we look close here, it hasn't gotten it quite right. It's not gotten right to the line. Whoa, Nelly. So this is a little bit of, uh, you know, you get a little bit of work where you kind of just gotta dial it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do it a little bit tighter to the top here. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are gonna go ahead and blend this in. And let's take another look here. This part here, 
I'm gonna go ahead and add it in. And if you want, you can just you just hover down to add to it. You just go ahead and you just start adding. You just left click and to subtract, hold down the Alt or the Option key, and you can just subtract little parts and bits and pieces. And you of course can go ahead and change the size of your brush. So right now I've got it on 25, but if you've got a very very fine selection that you need to do, you can reduce the size of it quite a bit. And I'm gonna get it to something like that. Okay, now the next step, and this is actually kind of counterintuitive, but if we just hit mask on this, it's not correct. I was gonna just do it that way, but that's actually not the right way to do it. What we need to do now is we gotta go up here to select and then go to inverse. And when we do that, what we're doing is we're selecting everything ex except the part that we wanna pull out of this. So watch this, when I do this, and now I hit mask, watch what happens. We've actually pulled out the water and everything else has remained in the shot. So this is actually what we want to do. And you can of course go in here and do some brush work, but if you want to go ahead and make it a little bit more accurate, but I'm just gonna go ahead with this because I don't wanna take too much of your time. So there is our first crack at it. Also, we can go ahead here and we can select the mask and we can go up here to select and mask and we can maybe feather it a little bit if you want to, like maybe that, I'll feather like two pixels because it's, ah, uh, yeah, let's go something like two pixel feather and a little bit smoother just because contrast up a little bit, shift edge in a little bit, just because I want these edges to be not as sharp and as delineated. I want them to be feathered. Feather is the one that matters the most here. And then I'll just click okay. So we've got a nicer feather on the edges. That is not a required step. It's just one I tend to take. And then presto, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to file. I'm gonna go to export, export as PNG. This can't be a JPEG. This has a transparency background now. You'll see here that we need the transparency because that's where the hole in the image is, which is where the water is gonna go. So I'm gonna call this beach transparent. I'm gonna click on desktop and I'm gonna click on save. And now we're gonna, in the next shot, I'm gonna show you how to import it. And then I'll even show you how to do a quick green screen to make it more fun. And then we'll call it a day. All right, so now we're back in the Premiere Pro, and I've just got the regular footage here that we stabilized earlier. Nothing's been added to it, but we just created that transparent style purple moon background thingy that we just made there in Photoshop with generative fill. Let's get that. So I'm in Finder. I'm going to find the image, which is called beachtransparent.png. I'm going to drag and drop that into my project. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and add that on top of the image or on top of the video. And while I'm here, I'm just going to increase the length so they're both the same length. Now take a look at what we got here. Look at that. We've got our generated background. We've got the orange here coming over the hills here. We've got some nice bright lights. We've managed to keep the ocean in it, and it looks pretty convincing. I'm not going to lie. It looks pretty damn good. We've added in the purple color cast to the waves and a little bit of a purple color cast to the rocks as opposed to the original shot. And now the easy part is the green screen with the monster that I'm going to show you. It should take like 60 seconds, and then you'll have the best video you'll know. So here we go. I'm going to add that last part in. Let's get going. All right, and for the final part, I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and add in some green screen footage. This is obviously optional. What I've done is I've got an account with elements.envato, and I'm not plugging them, but I've got this video here of a dinosaur running across. I downloaded it. It's a paid subscription, so you can't get it free, but you could create your own or find something on the internet. Anyways, I've got it here. I'm gonna to go to my finder. I'm gonna to go to my downloads, and here's the dinosaur. I'm gonna drag and drop the dinosaur in and presto. Now I'm going to drag and drop that little creature on top into the top V3 track and you'll see here that there we go we've got our dinosaur running and I want that dinosaur running across our purple beach. All right cool so how do I do it? I'm going to make sure I'm selected on the top layer and then I'm going to go to our effects panel it's right here again if you don't see it window check for that uh, check mark beside effects. We're going to grab a key called ultra key so in the search bar type in ultra and then drag and drop ultra on top of the dinosaur like I've done here. Now go to the effects controls panel or the effect controls panel. When you're in there, you'll see ultra key. My dog's barking, pardon me. And then here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this little eyedropper here, hold it down, and then actually you gotta hold it down and drag it over. And then sometimes it doesn't work to be fair. So I'm gonna click on it and then click on it again. Come on, Mr. Eyedropper, there we go and just select one of the greens. So I'm gonna select the green color and presto. There we go, we've got our green screen pulled out. Our dinosaur is doing the dino walk and if you wanna change where he is, you can move him around like this, etc. 
But that is literally how you create this awesome video from scratch, step by step. Thanks for watching.